Welcome to Nice and Blunt. I'm Adam Riancho, and it's Thursday, week 11. We have a game tonight between the Eagles and Commanders. Who you going to start and who you going to sit? Before we begin, the injury report is of note. Brian Robinson Jr. is active tonight. He's missed the last two games, and he's off the injury report. He will play against Philadelphia. Maybe not 100%, but a really big part of their offense, and that is some good news for Washington. But their newly acquired cornerback, Marshawn Lattimore, a stud when healthy, is out with a hamstring injury. He is not ready to go. So uh, that's unfortunate. Linebacker Nick Bellore also out, along with kicker Austin Seibert. Maybe they go for two instead of kicking some PATs. But their offensive line also has three players who are questionable. And those are the only injuries. The Eagles have been pretty much completely healthy since putting Britton Covey on IR in October. So that's the injury report. Let's get into the starts of this game. And with the Eagles, it's very straightforward. You're almost always starting whoever you have in Philly. Jalen Hurts has been a insanely productive quarterback with eight rushing touchdowns, six passing touchdowns over his last four games. He is the quarterback one averaging 29.4 points in that span. So he doesn't need to do much in the passing game to get it done on the goal line. He is elite. Eight rushing touchdowns is insane, but we've seen him do that almost every year, the last several. So uh, not that shocking, but um, 46 rushing yards per game is also a very nice boost. He's fantastic. Definitely the quarterback one in my rankings this week. The matchup against Washington is not great, but in his last five against them, he averages 273 passing yards per game, 11 touchdowns, one rushing touchdown, only two turnovers in those five games. So 22.7 points, very high floor. He should be fantastic on Thursday. Should be fully rested after that blowout win against Dallas. So definitely start him. No one's ever benching him. And you're also never benching Saquon at all. Touchdowns have been a little bit uh, diminished given Jalen Hurts is scoring eight of them the last month, but he still has three for Saquon. That's still pretty good. And 144 yards from scrimmage per game. He is a lights out, elite option. There's possibly a case to be made. He is the MVP this season, but I doubt he wins at the moment though. He's definitely a lock in your lineup. If that's his floor, 140 yards per game, you kind of don't care if you get the touchdown, but obviously you'd like it to happen. I think it will. And I think last week the usage was just prepping for this Thursday game. I don't expect Will Shipley or Kenny Gainwell to be involved. So definitely start Saquon. He's my running back two this week. And the commander's defense does allow 5.1 yards per carry. I think he'll be fine. They also give up six rushing touchdowns the last five games. He should find the end zone. So start Saquon. No one's ever benching him and no one is ever benching AJ Brown. He normally dominates this matchup against Washington and three career games against them. He averages 26.7 points per game. I almost ranked him at number one this week with 130 yards per game on 7.3 catches per game and five touchdowns in this three game sample size. He should torch them once again. I think 100 yards and a touchdown will be guaranteed for AJ Brown tonight. He should dominate. However, this matchup is tricky. The last five games, they rank bottom five against the position. Number 28, only giving up 20.8 points per game. That's half of what the Ravens give up. They're the best matchup in the NFL. So uh, he should be okay based on history, but maybe they do limit this offense a little bit. I doubt it. And I'm willing to overlook these stats for AJ Brown. He's my wide receiver three this week. However, Devonte Smith is a different story. I think he's just a flex play and the matchup stats do concern me in general. Maybe AJ Brown does dominate again, but Perhaps there's not enough to go around to keep Devante viable in fantasy. He's not been elite the last four games, only averaging 9.2 points per game. And with two touchdowns, he's a bit touchdown dependent in that department. Rarely goes over six points without it. So I'd be a bit concerned, but given his talent, it's probably safe enough to bet on. At number 26, I'd still think he's a legit flex play this week, but he's been really good against them in his career as well. The last five games versus Washington, Devontae's averaging 88 receiving yards per game with three touchdowns. He's averaging 15.5 on a per game basis. So if that happens tonight, wide receiver 26 will be way too low, but given his recent history, I could be giving him too much benefit 
of the doubt. So I'm a little bit worried. The commanders have really stepped it up lately. Maybe Mike Sainra still is too occupied on A.J. Brown, though, to limit him. So uh, Benjamin St. Juiced might get torched. Smith, I think, is still a top 30 receiver and a decent flex play. I would probably start him if I had him tonight. But based on your depth at the position, let me know in the comment section if you have a decision you're still deciding between. Other than that, Dallas Goddard, I think, is on the fringe of the start territory at tight end in a 10 team format i would bench him but at number 12 i think you could stream him if you are missing someone on by this week goddard versus washington usually plays okay against them an average of 7.8 points per game with two touchdowns the last five games only 36 yards though is not great he scored a touchdown last week so maybe it happens again but odds are he's not fantastic he has been good this season but a lot of his numbers the last four games do include aj brown out of the lineup he's not been healthy as well so really touchdown dependent i think um you could bet on him he is talented he used to play very well against washington before they acquired aj brown but since then he's been pretty lackluster so at tight end 12 i don't think you have to start him but i would consider him given your situation i do not rank will shipley or kenny gainwell though i think last week's usage was not safe enough to bet on and it was blowout win specific against dallas not going to happen against Washington, but I don't trust Jahan Dotson or Johnny Wilson either. No way I'm starting either of them. All of those players would be unranked on the back end of their roster. For the commanders though, their offense is kind of straightforward as well. I think Jaden Daniels is not that safe though. I don't think he's a must start. He's not been the last four games and a rib injury is a big reason why he's only averaging 14 points per game. But given he's not 100% that's probably why he's not running it as much. 36 rushing yards per game is still pretty high. Definitely one of the higher ends in terms of quarterbacks this season. But before the injury, he was averaging well over 50 rushing yards per game. And given the drop off, his ceiling has taken a hit. He only averages 14 points per game his last four. 186 passing yards per game is also nothing special. He only has Terry and Zach Ertz to throw it to. And that's a big reason why. But only three passing touchdowns, no rushing touchdowns. He has not turned it over. That's really nice. But given his numbers are so low in the passing game, he needs multiple touchdowns to pay off. And that really happens in this offense. They really funnel it towards the running back near the goal line. And I'd be very concerned that Jane Daniels does not have multiple touchdowns tonight. The Eagles matchup is also terrible. Over the last five games, they are the worst quarterback matchup, only giving up 9.4 points per game. A lot of that is matchup dependent. They haven't played too many uh, good quarterbacks, but Joe Burrow is part of that list, and maybe they limit Jaden to under 10 points. They only give up 148 passing yards per game, only one passing touchdown, two rushing touchdowns, and six total turnovers, four picks, two QB fumbles. So I'd be concerned 18 rushing yards per game is kind of negligible. I think Jaden really needs to step it up in the touchdown department to have any value. So at QB 13, I don't think he's a must start at all, but in a super flex format, obviously you're going to start him. I think he's just a streamer this week though. I don't really trust the ceiling and given the matchup, I think he is worth a downgrade and he hasn't played much better than this ranking in the last month in the first place. So I'd be very concerned, but obviously we saw some massive upside for him at the beginning of the year. I'm still trying to start him if I can, but at QB 13, I think there's options on the waiver wire. I would prefer like Geno Smith off a of bye, I think has some high yardage in the passing game. Justin Herbert's played really well. Jared Goff probably hasn't turned over, turned it over five times against Jacksonville and Bo Nix has played out of his mind in fantasy. He's been a top 10 quarterback where Daniels has not. So I actually prefer all of them above Daniels. I don't think you have to start Daniels at all, given the depth potentially on the waiver wire. So let me know who your options are. Given the four teams on by though, maybe he's your best option. At quarterback 13, he's okay, but not great. His number one receiver, Terry McLaurin, is a must start. However, there's no other threat in this offense. And Terry's been fantastic. Only 5.8 targets the last four games, but doesn't really matter. He is turning those deep shots into touchdowns with two touchdowns and 89 yards per game. The last four, he's a top 10 receiver, averaging 14.1 points per game. He is definitely a lock in your lineup. But this matchup against the Eagles is really bad. They rank bottom of the NFL 
Number 32 is brutal. So I'd be very concerned. They only allow 82 receiving yards per game to receivers the last five weeks. Since the bye, those rookie corners have really stepped up. So there's a world where that deep shot does not hit for Terry, but I really think they're going to be really feeling the pressure against the Eagles offense. And at some point, a 50 yard catch probably turns into a startable week for Terry. I think it might even be on the first play of the game. They might be feeling the desperate nature of this matchup right out the gate. So I think Terry is a must start no matter what, but given the downgrade of a matchup, I did bump him outside the top 10. But in his last five games against the Eagles, he's averaging 13.4 points with only one touchdown in that span. He does it on yards as well, an average of 88 yards per game. So last four averaging 89, his last five versus Philly, an average of 88. I think Terry will be just fine. He should go over 80 yards tonight. So I'm definitely going to start him, but I'm not starting any of their other wide receivers. Luke McCaffrey, the rookie, and Noah Brown have done nothing with the exception of the Hail Mary for Noah Brown. That's definitely not something you can project to repeat. So don't start them at all. I have them unranked. Leave them on the waiver wire. But this offense really funnels everything towards the running back for the most part. Brian Robinson has scored a ton of touchdowns. When healthy, he's usually a lock to find the end zone. If you look at his last four games, four touchdowns, 69 yards per game, only one reception, 15 touches. He has been banged up, but an average of 13.5 points is a top 20 running back. You're usually starting Robinson with confidence and given he's active I think he will crack your lineup but the matchup against the Eagles is terrible the only worse one would be the Chiefs matchup the Eagles are right there with them against running backs only giving up 11.4 points per game so really tough spot only 60 rushing yards per game on 3.7 yards per carry I do not think Robinson will be very efficient tonight and he doesn't do much in the passing game so very touchdown dependent I worry about it the Eagles have only given up one touchdown to running backs in their last five games since the bye so the run defense is very legit I would genuinely be worried about Brian Robinson so I do downgrade him at number 24 he is not a lock in your lineup just a flex play this week but on the higher end of the spectrum and if it's a 12 team league I would be telling you to start him so uh good luck I think you really need that touchdown down it may or may not happen but if anyone's a safe bet to score in Washington it would be Robinson more so than anyone else so I'll probably start him given my options at RB 24 he probably cracks the lineup he is averaging 11.9 points in his last three games versus Philadelphia an average of 72 yards per game on 18 touches with two touchdowns in three games that's kind of what you're expecting tonight so good luck to you I think you may need it the matchup's tough, but odds are Robinson has earned your trust. You're probably starting him if you have him. But Eckler has really stepped up in his absence the last two games with three touchdowns. He's been a must start in his absence. But in general, he rarely scores touchdowns, so that's what I'd be worried about. But he also is pretty efficient on roughly 10 touches per game most of the time. That's what he's averaging his last four, but obviously the absence for B-Rob is a factor. But I also don't think Robinson is 100% healthy. So Eckler will continue to be leaned on here, and I see the game script really benefiting the passing game. So I think he will get some catches as well. He usually gives you about 50 yards from scrimmage. But touchdowns are very important. Without it, he probably does not go over eight points. And that's why he's not worth starting in most scenarios. I think outside the top 25, I'm benching most running backs. At 28, the floor is decent. I think seven, eight points is a fine projection for Eckler. But like I mentioned with Robinson, the matchup is terrible. And I really doubt he finds the end zone. I don't see much of a ceiling for Eckler. So I wouldn't probably start him at number 28. He is a low end flex play. I'd rather start a top 30 receiver uh, much, much more than Eckler. But with Robinson healthy, you cannot start Jeremy McNichols. He has scored some touchdowns this season, but vulture potential is his only value. And given he's the third stringer, there is no way I'm starting him. He is unranked, did not crack my top 50. At tight end, though, we have a very interesting narrative brewing for Zach Ertz. It's a revenge game for him. He is a potential Hall of Famer. I doubt it. Not first ballot, but it's possible he did win a Super Bowl with the Eagles and his stats with them are fantastic. I think there is a scenario where Kingsbury draws up a touchdown for Ertz. I think they will be locking up 
McLaurin tonight, so especially near the goal line, you will need to look elsewhere most of the time. So Ertz might get it done, and he's been a decent floor play this season. An average of 38 yards per game his last four games with one touchdown, four catches per game. 7.3 is decent. You're not going to be too upset if that's what you get in your lineup tonight. But even without the touchdown, I think you'll get about five or six, and that's worth gambling on at number 13 at tight end. He doesn't have to be started, but is a interesting streamer this week if you have your typical option on by. So that touchdown is pretty critical against his former team. Maybe it hits, but the rookie Ben Sennett has not been a factor only involved with the backup quarterback Marcus Mariota and Second stringers usually have a better rapport. So Daniels does not trust Senate yet. Ertz is the guy at tight end. Ertz would be an interesting top 15 play. Senate is unranked. And the defenses are also interesting tonight. I think the Eagles are still worth starting. They've been so good since the bye. I think I would continue to roll them out there. The Commanders just played a very tough game against the Steelers. Meanwhile, the Eagles had a blowout win where they didn't exert much effort against the Cowboys. So on a short week, I think that could really be a factor. The rest and recovery time definitely favors Philadelphia. And they've been lights out on defense lately. I'm worried that they don't get any turnovers. Daniels rarely does that, but the Eagles should have a decent floor. I think they will hold Washington to under 20 points. So I still think they're a top 10 play. They've been so good. I would not drop them. Although I do have some waiver wire options like the Lions, Dolphins, Texans, and even Rams ranked higher this week. The Eagles at number seven, I would start tonight, but there is no chance in hell I'm starting the Commanders tonight. With four teams on by, they are a bottom three option at number 26. Do not start Washington. Is It is a death sentence for your fantasy lineup. There is blowout potential for the Eagles on offense. So Commanders, not a good start at all. Maybe if it wasn't a short week, I'd consider it, but against Philly, no thank you. Defense number 26 needs to stay on the bench. So, so here are my start sit decisions tonight for the Eagles. I think the only starts would be Terry and Brian Robinson. Nobody else is that safe, or I think you have to have them in your lineup. Even B Rob is more of a flex play. And that means the Eagles defense is worth starting. And then the Eagles offense has four studs that you're usually starting. No matter what Saquon is my RB two hurts. My quarterback one AJ Brown, my wide receiver three and Devonte my wide receiver 26. So all at least Flex starts for me this week. I do think everyone here on the screen should be in your lineup most of the time tonight. The flex considerations, though, there are four guys on the bubble, though. I think Jane Daniels only in a two quarterback format is a must start, but odds are at QB 13, you're at least streaming him depending on your options, but maybe you can find a better option on the waiver wire. I genuinely think Bo Nix will have a better fantasy game than Daniels tonight. But Eckler, I think, is an interesting flex option. I'd rather bench him, but I do see some work for him in the passing game, given Robinson is not fully healthy at RB28. You could do worse, but Goddard and Ertz, I have back to back at tight end 12 and 13. I do see some upside but they are kind of touchdown dependent, not top 10. You don't have to start them if you have a better option, but otherwise all of the backups that are probably all on the waiver wire in the first place, all of these guys are on the bench. Don't start Noah Brown, Luke McCaffrey, Deami Brown, Jeremy McNichols, Ben Sennett, Jahan Dotson, Johnny Wilson, Kenny Gainwell, Will Shipley, or Grant Calcaterra also do not start the commander's defense. So that's it for start sit decisions. This is my final score prediction. I do believe the Eagles will win. Everything I think is in their favor. Their defense is playing lights out. The commanders are not fully healthy with Daniels still maybe sore from that rib injury. Robinson missed some games recently. And with the short turnaround time, I think rest is far, far more in favor of Philadelphia. So I think they're Offense will be great. The commanders might look flat. And then the commander's defense probably gets torched. So I think the Eagles win comfortably. 30 to 17 is my prediction. I think they'll win by well over 10 points. So I don't really understand the line. Maybe the rest is something I'm overestimating, but the Eagles minus four should be favored by a lot more. I know that commanders probably deserve some credit, but I just don't see it tonight. I think that second matchup in Washington, they will have a chance to pull the upset. They have played very tough against the Eagles the last couple of years, but tonight, I just don't see it. So I'll take Saquon and the Eagles to win comfortably 30 to 17. That means I'll take the Eagles to cover minus four. Definitely give me Philly. And then the over under 
point total is 50 points. I think it will be less than that tonight. A more low scoring game for the commander's offense. Weather is not a factor. It's 46 degrees in Philly tonight, but very little wind, no rain, nothing to worry about in Philly. So that's my prediction. We'll see what happens, but I also give you a bet for this evening. Every Thursday, I give you five picks on underdog. I only put down $3. It's unlikely that all five hit, but when they do, the payout is substantial. So five picks for 285. We only put down $3. If you want to join me, use code nice and blunt. And if you're new to underdog, get your first deposit matched by 50%. There's a $10 minimum. So if you do put down $10, you'll get an extra five to play with. It goes up. If you put down a hundred dollars, you get an extra 50 to play with. So go over there if you are new to underdog and you're interested, but here is the bet. Here are the five picks for 285. I need all five of them to hit. And that means the riskiest one, this Zach Ertz pick is probably the, where the bet will crumble most likely. But, um, I think there's a legit narrative going for him to score. Maybe it doesn't happen. The Eagles have not given up a single touchdown to tight ends this season. So I could be wrong, but, um, it was a two times multiplier in terms of scorchers. This does maximize the payout substantially. So I think it's possible a revenge game touchdown. Give me Ertz anytime TD and we'll see what happens. But these other ones I think are pretty legit. AJ Brown dominates the commanders an average of 130 yards per game. I think he goes over hundred easily tonight. So give me the over on AJ Brown, hundred yards and Saquon averages 144 scrimmage yards. The commanders allow 5.1 yards per carry, 117 rushing yards per game. So as long as he doesn't get benched in a blowout for the backups, I think Saquon will go over hundred rushing yards. That one feels like a lock. So it's going to be coming down to to these commanders, Eckler probably gets involved in the passing game. And when that happens, he either gives you less than 15 receiving yards or over 40. So I feel good about 20 plus for Eckler. I think it will happen. I think they will need to check it down. Given Robinson's not 100%, I do still see a role for Eckler, especially in the passing game. So I like that for Eckler. That one feels safe. And then Terry is a bit of a risky bet but the matchup is the only concern. Otherwise, his last five versus Philly, he averages 88. And his last four this season, he averages 89. So I hit the over on 80 receiving yards for Terry. Maybe he gets locked up, but I do envision a deep shot hitting. And as long as that happens, I think it'll hit. So a 50 yard catch for Terry, essentially, along with a touchdown for Zach Ertz is my belief. That's all this bet really boils down to. So wish me luck. I'd love to see 285 back in my pocket, but um, if you want to play it more safe, just bet on Eckler, AJ Brown, and Barkley. Those I think are the safer bets in these five, but uh, that's going to be it for me. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. And again, if you want to use code nice and blunt and get that first deposit matched, use the link in the description, go over to underdog and enter code nice and blunt on sign up. That's it for me. My name is Adam Riancho. I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Nice and blunt.